mind culture, your culture. My culture. Culture, culture and mind. A little bit for the intro. This is a, a part of the Viral Art Conference. And viral Art Meeting, we call it, which is a part of Viral Visions European project and also of Mind Culture podcast, the uh, thing that you can see on www.mindculture.eu. Shared histories, that's one working title. The other working title uh, is Where Can We Learn From Each Other? And then there are like several more working titles. But generally speaking, I would love to concentrate on how, how the knowledge gets created in arts and how, what kind of pedagogy can we use, what kind of pedagogy are we already using and what kind of, uh, where can we go with this knowledge, how can we use this knowledge. So this is more or less uh, the, the range of topics. Who are the guests today? <laughs> the guests today are, I, I have a personal relationship with each one of them. We have a, a wonderful Edita Brown, the very um, influential Austrian physical theater and contemporary dance maker based in Salzburg. And as far as I know, uh, touring around the world. So whenever we go on tour <laughs> with our own company and I look at the festival where we are going and then I look at the history of the festival, Edita Brown company has been there. So that's Edita Brown. Then we have uh, my wonderful choreographer, uh, Georg Blaschke, with whom I have been I have had pleasure working on figure five and figure three uh, in Burgenland and I think in Vienna. I had some pieces long time ago when I used to dance and I really enjoyed that. Uh, Georg is uh, based in Vienna and uh, I consider Georg one of the most talented choreographers um, that I know. So if you haven't uh, seen his work yet, please check it out. It's uh, very special. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> uh, then we have Maya Mirek. Uh, I heard that you're a journalist, wonderful dancer, uh, also studied in Linz. Uh, we don't know each other, but now we do. Uh, Michi, I uh, used to dance with Michi in a piece uh, by Rose Breuss in Linz. Michi studied in Linz, I studied in Linz. We happened to dance in a piece together. He was in different year than me. And he's a wonderful, talented dancer. Yes. Now based in Vienna. <laughs> and I agree. Master, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> the master Bruno Jonti, uh, that taught me about breathing, about modern dance, and how you can dance with breathing, and then I was dancing with breathing, and then I forgot, <laughs> because I, <laughs> but now when I think about it, I wish I continued. <laughs> but Bruno has been a teacher also at the uh, Bruckner Universität. So yeah, uh, thank you. And Bruno is, uh, sorry, Bruno is many things. I've uh, been dancing uh, forever, choreographing forever, no. pantomime a teacher, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. everything. So it's not like I don't want to like downplay it. Everyone here is a, a spectacular, uh, talented person. Maybe can you tell me a little bit how you met? Because I heard that you all did. It's interesting because I was thinking about that today. In Paris, I think. It was in Paris. I think we were and both performing. Uh, yes. My first uh, yes. Yeah. We were performing in uh, Teatro 18. C'est ça. And you were first and we were after. I don't remember the order, but it was really the first day I met you. Yeah. And after I was really following uh, her work because I just I would like to add something about the... Uh, you, you, you say something funny, I think, about... Uh, 
uh, Edita. But I think it's very important to consider the place uh, of the woman in Austria, I think uh, Austrian culture, and the place of the choreography in Austria. And I think uh, it's why I, I was really always interested with her work and how she was, she's, because I don't want to say she was, how she's fighting for that, for the place, this place. And uh, at the first time our meeting was, when we, it was not really something special. I think we were in stress. Uh, you know, it's always the same when we have to perform. But after a while, I discovered the, the, her work, but really, it was very interesting. And it's still very interesting. I to mean, I think we have to say, it was 91, we were performing in Paris, and now it's 2022, and we are, since many years, colleagues at the Bruckner University yeah. and both in the yeah. teacher yeah. panel yeah. and so on. Yeah. And of course, I have yes, many of you, but also here I know many people. But it's for if you live for a long time, then you experience a lot. Yeah, it's true. And we met in eighteen eighty nine. Eighteen. Yeah, eighty nine. Nineteen eighty nine. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did my first and only audition with Edith Brown. <laughs> It was my very first piece. Uh, and we met in Salzburg. First, yes, I because guess. it was a workshop and you were dancing with Johannes Randolph yes, and also. some uh, Christoph, I don't remember her, his name. Eichinger. Yeah, yeah. In Salzburg. Already shared past. Yes. That's uh, amazing. So you know each other for a very, very long time. That's what I get from this. And uh, could you tell me a little bit, and I'm curious, because you have such a profound careers, uh, I'm talking to all of us, of course, but uh, you in spe especially, and I'm, I'm wondering, over the years, uh, how, how was the experience of being a contemporary dancer or being a contemporary movement interested person or I love to dance, I want to dance, how it used to be then and how it is now? Like what, what has changed in your perception? In I ask all of us. It's a big question. As No, it's not a big question because it was not my choice. I didn't decide to dance. The people asked me, uh, because I was starting with something else, for, with a mime, and uh, during these workshops, they say, I mean, you are not mime at all, you are a dancer. And it's why, I, it's why in, my, in my career, never I took, a I take a decision, I took a decision, never. And when you ask me uh, this, uh, how it was before and how it's now, for me it's always easier because uh, maybe the topic of this, because I like uh, when you wrote us, you, you, you write about, about uh, uh, this universal knowledge. Now it's clear why I want to share something with uh, people. I don't say student because in this time for me, I consider the equality of the intelligence is not about the hierarchy. And I, I, the, this knowledge, it's what is the human being? It's a base, a base. And the second knowledge, uh, question is the artist has a missionary. And you, after you can prolongate it, it is quite clear and always more clear for me. Maybe um, I... What is could my, I mean, there are so many aspects to talk, and so uh, I, I just wonder what would be interesting for you. But uh, one thing is that f for many years, at least two, three years, I didn't dare to call myself a choreographer. I just said, okay, I start, I do something together with, with other people. And just slowly I, I said, aha, uh -huh, in fact, that's not the fourth piece. So may, maybe I could call myself choreographer. So at the kind of modesty, uh, which I still carry in me, and I think it's very, it's 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 good. It somehow um, helps you not to become arrogant or or feel or, or lose the 
irgendwie da, dass man über eine Suppenschüssel rüber, über den Rand drüber schauen kann, denke ich. And, and the other thing is, I, I think, um, I just do. So I, very often I think, okay, now very important piece, it's always the last one, it's now it's Naima. And then I think, mm, I will never have an idea anymore. And it just needs this emptiness of never having an idea to give space to something new, which pushes me. And in fact, I'm pushed and uh, to do, and, and I'm so much dependent and grateful to the people I'm working with. It's not only the composer or Thomas who travels with me since ever, 80, 82 in fact, but also in this case, uh, Georg was dancing with me, and now my, um, so many years Meyer. And I think the people who work with you are so precious, and this is this carries me through the long time. Voila. Yeah, maybe you're referring to your question about the body of the performer, as well, rather the performing body, as the instead of the choreographer. Um, I see a difference. I mean, when we started, or I and many of, of others that felt this urge to to express for several reasons something, a drive through the body, it was not so much academic, and it was not so much standardized in education as uh, nowadays. I mean, I was, as all of us were teaching a lot throughout Austria and other maybe international institutions, I, I made the experience at least throughout the last 15 years, that it gets more and more standardized what is the knowledge uh, that you have to technically or from your physical capabilities to to accomplish, to get your diploma, and then to have this kind of step-by-step -step career. And in my generation, or let's say in my typical Viennese generation, I grew up around this area actually, on the football fields, there was nothing. Uh, we, we kind of made this self gebastled, so in this kind of self-made uh, training stuff, which nowadays in this uh, institution we have in Vienna, in this quartier, is, is still now, actually it's coming back to what it was 20 years ago, the community is again looking for training options and uh, so we were kind of self-organized with the body and but also what would we need as a training and out of that came also a kind of choreographic artistic image that you would maybe then present as arts work mm -hmm. I see this difference mm -hmm. but I think it's coming back And uh, I was quite happy to see maybe in the institution, in one institution, it's possible now to come to to consider the the individuality, the really the particularity, the specificity of each dancer. Not only you have to dance, you have to dance all all exactly in the same way. It's a fight. Every day it's a fight, or every year it's a fight. But that thing, it's possible. Not everywhere. I agree with you. Is it a bigger fight now than it used to be? Because you say that artist was missionary and you say that, uh, let's say, the, the motivation to do uh, dance come from the, mo the motivation to train or, let's say, to develop your own body. Uh, so I'm wondering, uh, is this urge different now than it used to be, maybe on yourself and maybe also what you see on other people? How is it? I have the urge with the older body as well as before with different uh, possibilities, but I perform almost every year. But uh, I don't know about the others so much. I mean, that's, I think, very personal. Yeah. What I, what I think is uh, when we started, so I started earlier than Georg, but uh, not so much earlier, and we had a enormous freedom, what to do, who we are, what is the output, and now with these institutions which carry, this, it became more and more narrow. So the freedom, I can just encourage young artists, do what you want and don't listen what is fashion, don't listen what uh, um, you have to. Uh, I, it, it was so great to have this freedom. Uh,
we were, we did very bad pieces, but then very good ones, and and we did bad trainings, or I had back pain, but then I, it was a so it was extreme somehow, and now it's everything is seems so. It's, this is why I I don't know if we talk the same, but the same. It's very standard. It's on one standard and yeah. and uh, careful and fuck not. The world <laughs> is going. The world is exploding. So let's go with it and fight for something else and be different also in this world which goes in all, all directions. And somehow we carried this from the uh, 68, 70s, uh, this kind of, bah, da, 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 let's go, go to Paris, yeah. Uh, uh, ask Jean Babilé, very, very, I mean, I went to Paris and I want to ask somebody who was as famous as uh, Nouriev, for example, to dance in the piece of me. It was my third piece. And he said, yes, I mean, who would do it today? You wouldn't dare for you know so much, you know? And this kind of naivety, I think we are missing in both body-wise and creation-wise. Yeah, but now everyone is aware of their own worth in the job market and like no one is willing to do yeah. things for free or to do things... Uh, but it's also like you have to survive. But now the dance is a profession. Did the dance used to be a profession for you or already in the beginning? Just before I disagree with yes. you. Because I agree with you. In this, in this time, it was uh, uh, the freedom. It was very political at the same time. Huh? For example, the contemporary dance in France was really... Uh, because uh, the the left side, François Mitterrand and the, his government, decide we need... A diplomacy, we need a cultural diplomacy, and the contemporary dance will be this uh, soldat. It was really about that. It's why we, 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 be, we benefited from this freedom. At the same time, 10 years, 15 years ago, uh, after we received the, the retour of this action, it was not easy. But when you say uh, the young dancer or the dancer actual, so maybe they don't have this, they are thinking about the market or so. But I think this possibility from the social media or this creativity with the image or with uh, another idea, what is the audience? Maybe it's not the topic, but it doesn't matter. Uh, you say new audience, but the new audience, that means what do you mean with public? What? You speak about audience in theater or you speak about this mass behind the telephone, behind the TV. And for, I think for the young dancer, it's a possibility to express maybe only for 10 people, but it doesn't matter, or maybe for 1 million. Huh? And they are a star five minutes, you know, this, this topic from I am a star five minutes, uh, Andy Warhol. Uh, yes, but that's the way. And I like, for example, this sentence from uh, uh, Michel Foucault. It's really you don't have object without praxis. That means if I want to do an object, doesn't matter which object, artistical object, I need a praxis. It's very often. And that, I think, the new, uh, new generation, no. But now it's possible. Before it was complicated. Because it was all, uh, that was more complicated. Now you can do and you have an audience. Uh, I think it's... Uh, it's the power of the this social media or the power of the society, the society, not always positive, but that's a possibility to create something mm -hmm. and to try. I try, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about this a little bit, Maya and Michi? How is it now for you, the experience? Yeah. Experience of being a dancer nowadays? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry to wake you up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, you are as a dancer. You have many possibilities. Now you would, you are dependent also from choreographers, basically that someone is hiring you for dancing, um, Förderung, stipendiums, and stuff like this is. You just have to keep on trying and trying and make your own network somehow to connect with people. And then once you're connected, the flow starts. But I think this takes a lot, lot, a lot of time. So, yeah. yeah. Yes, it's definitely it's not easy to be a freelance dance artist. 
because once connections are opening, we don't have a control, for example, of when they are appearing. So it might be that you have three pro propositions at the same time, and then it's difficult to decide which you should take because which will open a new door for you. And then, for example, for the next half of a year, you don't have any other project and you have to sustain your living. And sometimes, of course, we all would like to 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 live fully and to, as I said, sustain our living. But, for example, for me, it was very difficult to combine this with art. So I decided to have a side job. And this also takes a lot of time. If I would like to go to the studio, practice, improvise, sometimes I just don't have an opportunity or I don't have a space. Um, so these are challenge. These are very challenging uh, moments for us. So it's not easy. I might add something uh, because I, I noticed working with, with because many times I I, try, I like to work with younger generation uh, as well as dancers, performers from from younger generations or from schools directly and post graduated and 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 I notice very often that um, it's very hard to make this step from this bubble of a uh, an university to the the real life of let's say I know very well the Viennese subsidy system and to to start getting self-organized with all this concept writing in in German English and calculation stuff and all the fristen and the, 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 the dead ends of what you have to do and many people uh, are kind of getting desperated because they are not educated to have to have they don't have these tools actually to go in this very kind of, and it gets more and more i would also say standardized and digitalized the application uh, rituals especially in vienna it's really not easy i know this uh, so when i'm established in this way but i was established in writing every year the concept and the, the city of vienna changes every year the calculation formula and the excel sheet so <laughs> and we have to know it be better actually than the authorities Did you, as a, also the wisdom to have we have the ig and stuff but actually and i noticed that in the school sometimes there's a bit of a bubble. Uh, it's a beautiful dancing body education, but the, the self-organization work is tough. And I think it gets tougher because we get more and the older generation still wants to have money <laughs> as well. And, and uh, so I, I, because I, sometimes I helped uh, younger, younger choreographers to apply. And, and I think that's not easy for the younger generation. For us, it was maybe easier. I remember times when we wrote the concept by hand. <laughs> and even the financial, but the budgeting. <laughs> the Elad mit der Hand. Yeah, I, I but, can. Uh, this is just a joke, an anecdote, because you wrote mm -hmm. some anecdotes so far. Uh, things, but nowadays it's getting really, I think, more and more uh, standardized, digitalized, and complex yes. to at least to just to apply. Mm -hmm. Maybe, th th I'm sorry, just one please, sentence to please. add. Maybe it could be, um, how to say, that maybe it's a critic towards education that institution should have prepared a uh, subject or lecture how to write, um, especially to learn vocabulary, because I think this is also important while applying for a funding. Um, but I also have the feeling that there are more and more opportunities to apply, so there are more institutions open for that. And this is something that makes me happy because when, when uh, Corona happened to the world, we saw that we can perform um, and we can do art outside of the theater and we can break this fourth wall. So this is also a nice idea to... to, uh, to it's, an, it's nice to see that other institutions are also open for contemporary dance, which was not happening that much before. So, and this opens again a door for creativity and connections. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, uh, oh no, this is, it, the apply, it's apl topic. applying in Vienna, it's, it's uh, I think one of the most heartbreaking topics for me that there is uh, at the moment. So my life is good. 
what I learned from the process of applying from writing 100 applications a year for several years, I learned how to be an artist or I learned how to be a cultural worker, how to try to respond to different issues. But then the problem with it, it kind of takes away my focus from doing art and actually from doing like creating those beautiful landscapes uh, on my own that I wanted to, you know, to make beautiful choreography, beautiful dance, uh, wonderful, spectacular creations and so on. Now I have to, uh, you know, write a project about, uh, I don't know, supposedly knowledge dissemination or or, or migrant issues or, or so on. But the question is, wh where is the line? Is this anyway included in, a, in the package of being an artist or should you oppose this? Or wh what is your relationship to this? Actually, I'm uh, kind of curious about that. I think it's very, it's, it's very important to know when you're freelance artist, let's say, uh, that I would say 70% is, is organization work at least, and the rest is artistic work. And you have to know it that this it's like that. Okay, if you have an engagement somewhere in the theater, you follow, but you don't decide. So you follow and, and but if you are a freelancer, um, you have to go with that. It's simply, it gets more and more for the world gets, uh, there's one layer more, so then uh, now it's, uh, there was Facebook, now it's Instagram, you have to feed, for example, yeah? So, um, I think it would be naive to think, uh, ah, only my dreams and my art. No, I mean, it's, we have really like this, we have to need, need the feet on the ground and go for it. And it's not so complicated. We are not stupid. So we just have to do it. It's a lot of work. It's, that's it. It's a lot of work. And I also think a little side job uh, like teaching gives freedom. So it gave freedom to me that I was teaching at university in Salzburg and, and in, in Linz for somehow it, I kept uh, also a connection to normal people and not only artists, which was good, but also gave me freedom not to do uh, whatever uh, with art. So I think it's not that bad. But do you think you have enough time to uh, this thirty percent? Are this enough time to? Yeah. 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 Yes, because mm. we have one hundred fifty. Genau. Percent. <laughs> genau. <laughs> yes. You have to yes. somehow. And I think this conflict, what you said, and I know you a bit because from your own stories, I think this conflict or this aggression, even or this uh, being annoyed by being also sometimes rejected or getting a bad answer or no or all this stuff uh, everybody has it and had it uh, it's frustrating but it can this it can it's a kind of negative energy also to to bring you to 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 give this conflict also a voice to make it to something creative yeah to not give up and, and just you can use it also i would not yeah i would not say okay yeah let's do Instead of that, I do something else, you know, or a little bit this. No, just, I mean, yeah, use this also kind of conflict. Maybe it comes, it creates another better work. It's, yes, because I, I, I don't want to separate, for example, the, because you say artists and normal people for me, I don't separate, for example, uh, this. I can't say you are artist and not artist. It's not a critic, just uh, semantic. And for me, teaching or sharing knowledge, I'm come back with because with this topic. If you are doing a piece, who is the pedagogue? The piece is the pedagogue. The choreograph is the pedagogue, or not at all, because it, uh, this person doesn't care. But it's not okay. But the piece by itself could be a pedagogue. Or the audience is a pedagogue because the audience push you to understand to or to to learn something. Yeah? That's one point. At the same time, if you are choreograph and you have a, a, a company or you have to do uh, what this business, I think it's very important because it's a part of the creativity to create only. Oh, I'm a creator. I have no responsibility. I don't know about the money and about the social right. And though I think it's a bit, uh, for me, very strange. It's why this kind of uh, 
we can say sometimes not so interesting or it looks like not so interesting work but it's very important for the creativity to to know your limit to know to push the limit to fight for the limit just because you have less money you have less time it's a learning process i understand the process i'm learning it's why this idea about pedagogy uh, you know how i hate this word but because everything is didactic for me it's not pedagogy it's about the didactic and i think in our world now it's not good to separate that because if you want to survive as a person in this artistic world frame you have to manage or to to know to understand oh maybe i can share that i can fight for that or i can do it and i will see what happens I, maybe my approach is a little bit naive, but I think that the process that we are going through, it's really important. And that's actually what drives us to create, I think, or I can speak for myself, that that's what I'm finding more interesting than the outcome that it's, it's just there. Of course, we all know that we have deadlines and premiere dates and so on, but without this process and without thinking how I got to this point, it would be, I don't know, it would lose something very important, I think. May I say something for, I have to leave that. Uh, I just, uh, for your question was how to give them knowledge. Is it, I think it refers exactly what you say. I give my knowledge and then knowledge is not my me an artist, but it's my life. So in a process, when I have the chance to work with the people, become more and more younger than me. I give everything I have. So my knowledge is anyway part of the, of the creation process. So it's, it is how, how I give. And um, maybe in the very, very long time ago, I gave movement and now I give experience of my life, what I understood about life, what is it, is it about. And this is why it becomes so intense for uh, if somebody's there like, like Maya was, uh, uh, and we, it's an exchange where it's not only I give knowledge, but I take knowledge. So a creation or we, it's a super chance to, 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 to do a um, kind of uh, dance art for it's uh, extremely enriching in both directions. I learn from young people or people or also old people I'm working with and I give, that's it. And this is you in a normal job you don't have it in with this intensity, neither physically, neither on an emotional level. And what would be like the, let's say, as like the essence or the universal knowledge? Like, is it some kind of humanity? Is it some kind of uh, understanding of of the bodies and some kind of understanding of self like what what is love. this that the, that the mm. dance it's love. art it's love it's so simple it's love <laughs> thank you <laughs> uh. yeah i would say it's also the skeleton <laughs> 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 and me, 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 I, use, no, I, mean, I, use, yeah. I use another word, maybe it's the same, it's an, uh, another traduction is about, it's a sharing. Yes. Sharing. Sharing. Alors, is it love? Is it knowledge? Is it, uh, I don't know, and it, I think, but sharing. Because this knowledge, I think, is very, very, is a treasure. Mm -hmm. And you can really, uh, after, speak about a lot of things. Sharing. Um. Please, anytime if you have to, you have to. Yeah, I just run and I say. Mm, yes. Bye -bye. Yeah. Uh, so for for the for me, interesting is okay. So you have the practice of sharing love, sharing skeleton, or sh just sharing. I, I I'm curious uh, how uh, how this process of sharing works, or how it used to work, how it works now. So basically, how do you communicate? What means do you? used to communicate with your audience, how do you get audience? And did it change over time? You mean audience or in teaching? Or uh, the same? Or I, we, the same? I could, someone could argue different. that it's also audience if you're teaching, or maybe the audience is the wrong word. 
difference maybe for me, but... Please. What is exactly the question? The, exactly the question would be, how do you communicate with other people that are not you on the basis of your art practice? Every time differently. Because when you ask us, so you give us this kind of so lines or guidelines from, from the topics of these discussions, it's very interesting, but it, this, it also changed, but it also changes back. So this relationship between you and us and sitting here and here and, and how something conveys or not, and the, or is it, uh, there's many different levels of interaction or not, or is it more the, the Burggraben, also uh, this kind of uh, Guckkasten here that's also coming back. So a lot of things uh, or the in between performances. I personally bef like a lot more outdoor location based performances, but I think something has to come over. <laughs> and uh, we are actually, what is fascinating us, I guess, is the non verbal communication. So why we didn't became literates or writers and if not musicians, but we use music, but still how, and then it's another topic, how to bring this in the concept again with writings. Uh, and uh, this is what, what makes me since many, many years being still fascinated to, to find out what comes over through the nonverbal gesture or a, a mode of, of conversation. So this is, I'm not interested in the, actually, in the narrative. But behind your question, we have another, you are, pu you are putting on the table a big, a big topic. You speak about passive audience or active audience. That's very, very, uh, it's a very politic at the same time. Because we can say, uh, when I say passive, I don't, um, it's not a critic, it's not negative. I speak about the action. And the passive audience can watch a lot, but without really uh, maybe uh, not interest, but they say, okay, I saw, but I don't need, although I'm not go, going further. You have an active audience, and this audience is very interesting, or this audience has a tradition to go somewhere or to practice. It's very interesting. I know why I say that, because I would like to speak about the past, if it's possible. I was in uh, 1985 in Poland and after and in Russia. Or, yeah. And you know, at this time, the media, social media doesn't exist. And sometimes TV, it was not so uh, easy. And the theater, the th the were all theater, were always full. It was not a question, we need a new audience. I think this topic, new audience, for me, it's a bit perverse. Because we speak about what? We speak about how many people are in the theater and they pay for the, the, to watch the performance. Or we have a, the audience, but an amount of people, they are present, but passive. And this passivity is not negative because at the same time, you know, I can see something I forgot, I saw. But suddenly I'm going somewhere, ah, yes, I know. But uh, it's this uh, passivity of the audience. And, and at the same time, it's a very, very, very nice. It's why I understand what you mean. But I think it's related with, it's related with the economy of the performance. All right, and it's exactly the same in uh, in uh, um, in education. If you want to use the word education, is the same. You have a passive education or active education. Maybe I'm not clear. I don't know. Yes, I. Yeah. And that's a big question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely, big question because. Uh, the audience, I think it makes sense, like for example, like the way you explain it, it kind of makes sense to be a dance artist back then, because back then people go to the theater. So back then 
you do something to communicate with people who go to the theater. Today, people maybe go to the theater less. So what is what do people do? People watch, you know, for example, mobile phone. Is this of the same value? Politically speaking, let's say. I really don't care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. because uh, if you do your artwork, you do your artwork. So I, I, what, what shall I bother with what the people look at their iPhones? Mm -hmm. and all. So I guess what we spoke in the break that now, maybe because of Corona, it comes back the need for for live performances and analogous, analogous uh, contacts again. So it's a great chance maybe for our art also. I personally, I'm not into posting a rehearsal video take instead of a performance as a as an equally valuable uh, piece of artwork, unless I would decide to make a video or a film as artwork itself. It's for me. Mm. Uh, and, I, and I think this question of audience is not the question of artists. It's about the programmer. The programmer. The yeah, programmer. yeah. And it's and about the, the programmer. How many? How many? How many? How many person are coming in the theater. It's a more, and I think that's for me why I say it's perverse, because now we take this question of this, uh, I don't know, sorry, um, souci. okay, this uh, question, we take this question because we think it's our responsibility. It's, no, I understand the programmer, the programmer has a, a theater, he pays electricity, he wants da, 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 economical, he, he needs new, he, they use the word, we need new audience. Okay, but it's not really the, the job of the artist but, uh, in this economy. Yeah, but how can you rebel against this? Because when I write an application, I am the manager. Like... I don't want I to understand. be. I understand you have to create your, uh, uh, yeah, but. It is something that is it's a role of an artist because of the economy. It's, it is. I think it's the perversity of the system mm -hmm. because it's not your responsibility. And if you, you look at a bit about uh, how, how it worked before, but I don't, to speak about the past, I think is maybe not so positive. But if you speak about, if you think about a writer, a book, about uh, something is composed of music, they are not thinking about how many people. No. Yeah, that, that, I think it's why, and it's all, it was always the same for the dance, contemporary dance. It's why it's very politic. They accuse us. Yes, you are doing a good job, but or the good, good, nice for art, but so less audience. You are right. But you know, it is because we know a contemporary dance, we know the dance or the dance out of the the tradition, if we can use this word, out of the tradition, is not is not uh, for the economy. We have to survive. <laughs> I think it's more that. And the programmers say, or ask us, or sometimes some institution, yes, but not enough audience. Excuse me, it's not your job in this case, because they get subvention to support the art, not to ask the art to do the job of the programmer. It's political, I agree. It's but very political, and I well, fully what agree. What means also is if you even don't have a programmer, no? That's even yes. It's uh, a no, it's it's, it's a cycle. Uh, difficult. No? I mean, but what I observe now also is a oh, there's a general actually a general battle uh, for the audience. No, after Corona, and I made the experience when I was performing in Brut last December, and they told us that in Burg that they had less audience than us. So also the big institutions are a bit, uh, I think, I mean, they have all the power and they have all the, the budget and the personnel, yeah. Uh, they are struggling with gaining audiences. And so now they're starting in the Kunsthistorische Museum with Klimt uh, in Mersch, Immersive. So they are kind of, also the visual arts, the, the, the biggest museums start they are they're losing their lost audiences a lot. They start to develop new formats, and it's, a, it's interesting. But I think it's a, yeah. 
I have no, I have no answer. So maybe the question is to the younger ones, like if you are going to pursue this path, what would you be your strategy? Like, would you be uh, working on the on your own audience, or you would you rather not care about it? How how does it? How is the relationship of, of the new of the new generation? Let's say. I think something that is very important to me is the fact that when we are performing live, there's something very elusive about what we are doing, and this is priceless. So I think I would not go towards um, creating something with new technologies and to gain this new audience, young generation and so on through that, but I would try to find or to implement them or encourage them to, to come to the theater, to go out, to, to reach to art, but also to, to still trying to be accessible for, for everyone. I think it's very difficult because of the times that, that we are living in. And also I realize that very often applications and subsidies, they have topics. And this of course goes with what is going on, going on around the world. But what if I want to do something different? I want to bring a topic from the past that anyway, it's influencing what is going on now. And then I'm not going to get the grant to create my art simply because it's not about the topic that it's there. And this, this hierarchy and this prioritizing applications just, just because of they are dealing with some other issues than another ones, it's, it's yeah, it, it makes me not wanting to apply because, yeah, of course there's whole system, political system involved, but yeah, it's a, it's a difficult, difficult time to, to be in. To be. <laughs> <laughs> like for me, it, I always, I use, for example, Instagram and social media for the, for advertisement, for showing the people this is going to happen because I think it's very important for the audience to see what they are going to expect. Like, they always want to know if it's worth to come or something in this direction, but it also doesn't work so well. Like, you pu put something there, but this Instagram is always like, everyone is going further. It, these are like... Yeah, it's like how, how three, two seconds you spend with the material and that's it. People are reading less. So yeah. it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a tricky. Well, I would say it's, it's from my experience, but maybe I, I have a wrong experience. But from my experience, it's really difficult to do this, uh, to, become, to be a choreographer nowadays mm. uh, or a dancer or anyone working with this. Uh, I miss the simplicity. Everything is so complex. Everything is so, uh, you have to have 70,000 functions. And I unfortunately am a person that embraces this and that's not always good because then you completely lo get lost and your art gets lost. So I think I, I almost forgot how to do it anymore. I think if you isolate yourself from it, I think it's a good strategy but it is a strategy that kind of works for you if isolating is not possible but uh, let's say you dose it very uh, depends mildly. what is it it really depends on your artwork and how is it going to be represented and mm. it, it has an ideology in, its, in a sense your own work has an ideology and it attracts people and maybe you find new collaboration and it attracts a new field I made experiences to, to, to open up towards visual arts when I, I, I opened up the work, not mainly, not exclusively for the, for the let's say, the dance scenes, so also colleagues, interested colleagues came from the visual art scene, for example. It was very interesting. Or you work for children or young, and you have a mixture of generations as a, a new audience gaining maybe idea. But I would not do it just to gain an audience. I want to do the artwork. And then yeah, uh, make it interesting, and I'm still convinced the audience will come. To 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 do it just because we want to share experiences and share knowledge as yeah. Bruno before said. Sometimes you have ten people, and it's very interesting and have a very positive vibration in space. Huh? 
and sometimes uh, you have 500 and, and you have a distant. Uh, but I know what you mean. It's not, I, I, I would not say isolating is possible. It's just, I just, I'm, 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 I'm not personally not, how to say, the, uh, I'm not uh, str uh, stressing the, 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 the social media, but my assistant does it a bit. And actually, without in Vienna or in Austria, let's say, I have an overview, it's not easy without a programmer in your back, a theater that promotes and has already a list of 2,000 and knows, and it's not easy. Or in pool stands, when you try to perform something in summer without in pool stands in Vienna, nobody might come. But it's also good that they are, because then you have, uh, you have audience and some people come that would never go mm -hmm. to dance, so. Okay. Not easy. So maybe uh, my, our lovely audience, would you have some questions to our guests? Please, shoot it at us. Please, yes. I would like to ask like all of you, um, to what extent do you think that the performing arts could learn something from other disciplines? in terms of audience generation, communication, etc. What, what do you mean with learning or gaining more audience or what is the... I mean, I think the, that the performing arts field is not the only one, as you said before, um, which is struggling to create new audiences and no. tries new approaches. Um, but in terms of um, methods, how to communicate with the audience, how to gain more audiences. Um, I think that different disciplines may have different approaches. So my question was more related with, okay, um, of course we can think about what to do with the art, right? Like it was very focused on from the artistic perspective, right? Like, should I think about the application process before I even start the creation process? Absolutely valid um, conversation. But on the other hand, I was thinking, okay, what if we're opening up and we see what the other disciplines are doing? Is maybe it's just a question that I'm putting into the room. Right? Um, may there be something we can learn how they are doing? Sure. If you think about the music industry, for example. I think it would be really interesting to to think about it for the second panel because we have artists that actually are are bridging those uh, different disciplines, but. There is, there is definitely like, I learn a lot from the educators. So I, now I, we're in this uh, European project with the institutions that specialize in education as well. So it's interesting because for example, in education sector, it's all about communicating with people and, and there are those creative strategies, but they are very basic, but there are those they're very defined and very easy to follow creative strategies that you can then build upon. So for example, like mapping is one strategy that is used uh, by in adult education. And I think it's really interesting or, or working, creating uh, what we had in another workshop, we were creating uh, colors from natural ingredients and it's, it's an activity that you can do with others and that uh, it's simple activity, but it's also so profound because you, uh, how to say, you restore some tradition that is being lost and, and now you, you, you work with like the natural components and so on. So there are those strategies that they use. And I thought that when I was there that, that uh, yeah, I could, some of them I could use for my artistic practice, but m many of them I could use for better application writing, for sure, for better strategizing. Just now, because I, I was a bit uh, confused, uh, how can I answer? I think it's very important to consider the context. Each time when you have a context, maybe you have some idea, you have a praxis, you have a concept, but each context, context teaches you something. Alors, is it because you are speaking with a with musician or you would like or you, you observe the, the musician, how they apply or not? You have to observe the context. 
That means how they react in, in the context, and you can maybe learn how the context can change, can, can change my concept or I can adapt my concept with this, the context. But we have sometimes the, the, the difficulty to accept the adaptation, to adapt the concept to the context. And if you are working with a different uh, artist, painter, uh, musician, uh, doesn't matter, singer, you create a new context. Maybe you have a concept, but this artist, how they are working, how they apply, how they react, it's a learning process. And this learning process in this context will have a big influence on your concept and so on. It's why I think, again, about sharing, uh, to share with other artists, you understand the context and maybe you find a strategy because you understand the context and you, you are in a learning process and you can maybe use this uh, knowledge in your uh, context for your concept. Uh, maybe it's a bit too complicated uh, with that, but I think mm -hmm. you understand. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. <laughs> I think also continuous or let's say cooperations that last for a while or have different outcomes for me was very enriching they reinformed my concept writing let's say after the first collaboration the first piece then writing again a second concept with the same collaboration from another field it was very fascinating to keep this this kind of exchange of the arts for a longer time also, and it reinformed the, also the, I think the substantiality of the concept writing and also the language, which is always a pedagogical uh, language because you have to teach also the curators. Yeah, it is, but as I said, not arrogant, but it is kind of, it's a, it's a, it's a it's something, it is precarious because still you, you want to stay with your artwork it is important that you don't get too spread and it's doing wishy-washy something and then you might not get funding either because they say, oh, this, is, this is maybe visual art, so this is not the right pot. Yeah. But for me, it was very, uh, let's say, very refining to, to continue collaborations and, and how this came back to their own writing about and to continue. Because nowadays we are kind of forced always to apply with a new piece. Yeah? It's also like this. Yeah? You have to always apply with something new. Yeah? And it's, I think this also changed to before. As unless you have one, two year, four years projects. But And I insist a little bit to make also in a project oriented way of working to, to foster the same collaborations. And I think after a while it, it gets really, it, 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 something comes out very substantial as of how you write then the concept maybe. That's what I experienced. Well, one, one domain is very interesting, it's the cinema. I don't know if you know how they are working, you, you know. There are maybe one ID, the ID stay, I know how many years in the box. And they write some text, some scenario three, four years, I don't know. But at the same time, they are doing something else. And each baby has a life. That means they find a co-producer, and after, ah, yes, maybe I have a, uh, an actor, famous, puff. You know, it's really like uh, you are going to fish, uh, fish in la pêche. And you have, uh, you have many ideas. It's about, but the, these ideas are always living at the same time. It's not only I have an idea, I have a concept. Ah, finish, next year, a new concept. No, sometimes they have 10 concepts at the same time. And it's one, I feel, one thing you have to learn, not to, to think I have one idea, I do a piece, and now the next, you know? No, I think it's good if you have 10 ideas, 10 projects, but you don't know which kind of project will really survive. But it's not bad. But you have 10 ideas and you are going, oh, this uh, programmer, maybe I can try, maybe. Or I can ask this dancer or this musician, can, can pl you can play with me or it's a new idea. And you have maybe five, I don't know, and you see which will survive. I think it could be a, a strategy, not only one after one. 
I think it's a difficulty we have in, in dance. Very nice. Uh, thank you so much for this talk. Uh, that's the talk. That was the talk. Thank you. Uh, talk, talk. <laughs> if you're watching this online, please uh, appreciate by subscribing to our channel and uh, leaving a positive review or so on like this. Uh, I hope we're going to have um, more wonderful conversations like this. And for now, for this uh, event, I wanted to make a little demonstration of a potential application on your phone to uh, edit your wonderful materials from today. If